The winter night air was cold despite the region's typical warmth. The crunch of dirt under the boots of her captors had been a rhythmic consistency that accompanied her in her waking moments. Her companion, a half-work man, was unconscious, dragged across the ground at the end of a rope around his wrists. Dirty and soaked by the late snowfall and a hidden layer of mud and clay beneath them. Her own clothes were smeared in places where she had fallen, landing hard on the ground. The hem of her dress ragged and dirtied over the course of their journey. Not that Victoria could see any of this. A thick cloth blindfold and a heavy burlap sack covered her face and obscured her vision. She could only rely on the rhythmic crunching and squishing of their footsteps as they traveled. It had not been long since they had been captured. She and Martin had been unloading their haul for the day from their meager fishing vessel. Working on the docks at night was dangerous, but with a small catch for the season, they had been forced to stay out later and later in an attempt to make ends meet. It was then that they had been taken. Martin was struck in the back of the head while she had been grabbed with a bag thrown over her own, a blindfold tied on the outside to completely obscure her vision, giving her no chance at realizing where she was or where they were going. As she now walked in darkness to her unknown destination, she felt the dirt road beneath her become harder, seemingly becoming cobblestone, signifying that she was being taken further into the city itself. Eventually, they stopped when she heard a knocking sound on what she could only imagine was a door. She heard the scrape of wood on stone, and then she was yanked forward by her tied wrists, out of the cold and into a warm interior. Rapidly now, she was dragged forward across creaking wooden floorboards, and then down a set of spiraling stone stairs. Slowly, she made her way down these stairs, careful not to fall, guided even now by her captors, all while she heard Martin's body slamming hard against each stair. As she descended, she began to hear deep reverberating chanting, a consistent vibrating song that almost like a round didn't seem to have a beginning or an end. Reaching the bottom of these stairs, she felt warmth, a heat that dwarfed the interior of any home. She heard the crackling of flames, almost like a bonfire, mingling with the chant itself, louder now as she approached the source. Suddenly, it was around her as she walked, to her left, to her right, to her back, and even before her. Blind in the dark, the chant was all that she knew. It surrounded and enveloped her like a heavy blanket. Brothers and sisters, a female voice rang out in the room as the chant ended. She was thrust forward towards the voice and down onto her knees. We stand here tonight to begin a new age, to make changes for the betterment of the world. Victoria, still on her hands and knees, had her blindfold roughly wrenched off. As her eyes adjusted to the sudden light, she took in the raging brazier flame beside her and beside Martin to her left. Martin, the half-orc man, muscular and strong, had never looked so weak as he lay there, bleeding from a head wound beside her. He took shallow breaths as the only signifying evidence that he was even alive still. Before Victoria stood a woman. The woman that had been speaking, supposedly, wearing a crimson red veil and black and red robes lined with gold trim. The room itself was covered in brass, silver, and gold upon inspection, around finely carved stonework and long red silk curtains. Behind the woman was a small altar, and even further and off to the side behind that, leaning against the wall, was a red-skinned tiefling man with a broken horn. His flesh gaunt and stretched thin, his eyes sunken as he watched with a firm expression. Not approving or disapproving. Simply observing Victoria, Martin, and this mystery woman before them. The woman looked over Victoria to people behind her, unseen in the dark shadows of the room, thrown by braziers behind her. We stand here tonight to show our dedication to the cause. The woman spread her arms wide open to the crowd, the hint of a smile on her otherwise obscured face. Tonight we honor the fallen. 
We honor the Golden Lord and remember his rule, but we bristle under the rule of the Sandblaze King, not of clan blood, not a chosen of the Lady of the Wastes. His rule has abandoned the ways of our founding. The crowd behind Victoria murmured in disapproval. As they did, the woman shook her head in apparent disappointment with their circumstances, a distaste for the very statement that she had even spoken. But I am now a chosen of Our Lady, and I am of the clans, as my mother was before me. With your support, we will depose this pretender, and the Mahmud clan will once again rule the wastes, the woman cried, raising her hands high into the air, palms open to this otherwise dark room. The crowd's murmurs ceased as eventually claps and cheers began to filter in at the end of this woman's speech. Grinning, the pale woman breathed heavily after this impassioned speech, head tilted back to the ceiling for a moment, just simply taking it all in. But tonight, to show our dedication to this cause and our dedication to Our Lady, we have two volunteers the woman said as she let her head tilt back forwards to look down to Victoria and Martin, her arms falling, still palms open, gesturing down to them. These volunteers will highlight the brutal plan, the wonderful plan, the plan of Our Lady herself. Tonight, these two become avatars of life and death, she said as the crowd's cheers rose once again half-hearted almost and unsure. Victoria's heart seized with fear as the woman slowly turned to the altar behind her and picked up a wickedly curved sword. Gold or brass and metallic sheen, its edge honed finely and glimmering in the firelight. We shed our blood for the cause as these two shed theirs for us the woman proclaimed, rolling up her sleeves where her arms were covered with numerous healing scars. Taking the sword in her hands, she cut first her right and then her left palm, allowing the blood to pool in those palms for just a moment before leaning down to the two captives. Victoria, as this woman approached, closed her eyes, expecting pain of some sort or some sort of other torment. But instead, she found the gentle hand brushing her head as this warm red liquid ran down her forehead in a smear, almost like a gentle caress over the top of her head. As the hand retreated, Victoria opened her eyes just enough to see the woman's face, somewhat obscured beneath this crimson veil, a half-elf like herself with dark hair and pale skin. Her eyes were cold while looking at Martin, but as her gaze shifted back to Victoria, her expression grew softer as they made eye contact. Standing back up to her full height, this woman turned to the crowd behind the captive pair, and one after the other touched the cuts on her palms. With a small flash of red light, the bleeding stopped and the wounds were healed. The crowd gasped quietly as she showed the healed scars on her palms to them. The blessing afforded to me by Our Lady. And now, she said, gripping the sword and retrieving a wooden cup from the altar behind her. We honor the deaths of our grand design with this. The first death of our crusade. With one swift movement, the woman leaned down and cut the throat of Martin. Victoria sobbed this gasping, weeping cry as she saw her friend bleed there on the stairs below the woman's feet, his blood pouring down his chest. The woman leaned forward with the wooden cup and collected the blood for a moment, filling the bowl as the crowd sat in silence. And we honor the lives that we fight for and the new life that we create from these deaths, the woman said as she turned standing up straight with the cup of Martin's blood and turning to Victoria. Victoria recoiled from the woman as she drew closer, step by step. Her heart was pounding and tears streamed down her face as she thought about her friend, Martin, 
His death, his life, everything he had been was gone now. Firm hands took hold of her and held her in place. Then, delicate fingers with long, sharp nails danced across her lips as she gasped in shock with this fear of what might be coming. These fingers gripped her jaw and held it open, jamming the lip of the wooden bowl into her mouth. Squeezing her eyes shut, Victoria wept bitter tears as she felt the warm, thick fluid pass her lips and fill her mouth. And it just kept coming. Slowly, she eventually found she needed to breathe as someone pinched her nose shut. Swallowing hard, she gasped for air before more was dumped down her throat. In a moment that felt like forever, the process was completed, and the woman retreated with the now empty bowl in hand. Victoria sat there, stunned and shocked, blood running down the corners of her mouth, the mess across her face, as she considered what had exactly just happened. She had been forced to drink the blood of her friend. This life made by the cause now lives for the cause. The woman proclaimed as the crowd kind of half-heartedly cheered. She will serve the cause one more time before she is free to her own life and calling. Then the woman turned to look back down at Victoria. Victoria sat there, blood spattered across her mouth and lips, down the front of her neck and across her kind of white shirt. You will deliver a message for me. I would beg you, take this and go to the address written on it. Deliver this message and you will be free to live your life as you see fit. But if you fail me, the Aldahab al Samit will find you and you will instead give your life to the cause as your friend has. Handing Victoria a wax sealed envelope, taking in her still bound hands, this woman stared her in the eyes for a moment before simply standing and turning to the rest of the crowd. Victoria sat dazed, struggling to comprehend her situation as more strong hands gripped her and she was dragged from the chambers towards the staircase. This had all happened so fast and she was unsure of anything and everything that had happened. Had it been a dream? Was she still asleep on their fishing boat? Was uh, Martin really gone? She stared at the mass of unfamiliar shadowed faces that stared intently at the woman behind the altar. She took in the light of the raging bonfires and massive brass braziers beside her, and she caught a glimpse once again of the red-skinned tiefling man with the broken horn in the back corner. He looked unamused with his arms folded across his chest. He made eye contact with her and gave her a sad smile before a blindfold was once again wrenched over her eyes and darkness took Victoria once more.